welcome back to another episode of It's the Flat Out Truth Podcast. I'm your host, Bravo Colon. I pray everyone is keeping it together throughout this time of crisis. These are very trying times, but with Hashem's help, we can make it through this. The key to making it through the fire is faith. Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had when they were cast into the fiery furnace, which burned seven times hotter than normal. So when you feel alone, call on Yeshua. He will answer. Last week, we touched on the topic of the unknown. And that is scary. I mean, not knowing what lies ahead of you on your journey. But we have a priestly king who has promised us victory if we would just trust and accept him as our savior, our leader, our shepherd. And not just any old shepherd, but the good shepherd. The good shepherd, he is a leader, a teacher, protector, and guardian. He is the one the sheep look to, to provide nourishment, guidance, and protect them from the predators of the world around them. We are told of one who fits this description to the T, of one who is selfless, caring, loving, and willing to lay his life down for his sheep. And that man, my friend, is Yeshua, the servant king who came for us, his sheep. And those who know him, those who know the sound of his voice, are without a doubt his very own. Let's take a look at a passage in the Gospel of John, which describes this good shepherd. Let's read John chapter 10, verses 1 through 18. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And the stranger will they not follow but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. And this parable spake Yeshua unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake to them. Then said Yeshua again unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And the other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore, Doth my father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again? No man taketh it from me, 
but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. Here we find Yeshua giving a description of what a good shepherd is. I mean, he uses himself to fit the description, knowing full well that there would be many false teachers whose prime objective is to lure the sheep away from the truth. Now we know that sheep are followers, and that is one of the reasons why Yeshua compared us to them among other characteristics. Well, what we need to see here is not the capacity of the follower, but the qualification of the shepherd, the pastor, teacher, or even rabbi for that matter. Let's take a look at verses 1 through 5 again. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. In verse 1, Yeshua stated that it isn't just true, but that it is factual truth when he said, verily, verily, that the shepherd who enters from anywhere else but the door has a hidden agenda and does not care for the lives of the sheep. Let's see what verily means in the Greek. Verily is amen in the Thayer, and it means firm, metaphorically faithful, verily, amen of Hebrew origin, um, Strong's number H543, amen, which means trustworthy. So the comparison of a person who enters via another way other than the front door with a thief and a robber is that they have no regard for the lives or safety of others as long as they take what they came for and sometimes violently. John 10, 1, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, sheepfold but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Yeshua is forewarning us of a certain peril that will overtake us if we aren't careful. After the death and resurrection of Yeshua, there have been many who have entered the confines of the Kehilat or congregation in an attempt to destroy it from within. The thief and the robber never follow the straight and narrow. They're always looking for a way to circumvent the legal process. As an example, most states in the U.S. have a system set in place to be able to purchase a firearm. The process takes anywhere from plus 30 days, where we have to fill out an application to purchase. On top of that, we have to get fingerprinted have a criminal background check, and also fill out a form to have a mental health investigation. Then after we receive the approved application, when we go purchase our firearm, we then have to pay for yet another background check called the NICS, which is instant criminal background check. And it's all paid for by the applicant. And once cleared, we can take our purchase home. Now that's a pretty intensive process, wouldn't you say? That, my friend, we can consider to be the front door. But the criminal, on the other hand, as long as he has the money, 
he'll go through the black market to obtain his firearm. Since there are no laws that govern the black market other than cash and carry, and it's definitely not performed by a registered firearms dealer, right? Or a registered FFL. So, so then common sense gun laws hurt no one but the law-abiding citizen, which many who were in favor of just recently found out the hoops and the hurdles that one has to go through to legally purchase their firearms. It's not so easy, eh? I just wanted to illustrate the differences of legally obtaining and circumventing the law to be able to purchase, which it directly relates with the Good Shepherd and the Thief or the Robber. But let's get back to the teaching. Yeshua was teaching a very valuable lesson to his disciples and is also teaching us. When we go to a church, a kahilat, or a congregation, the one who's seeking the truth, oftentimes he holds the pastor, the teacher, or the rabbi to a very high standard. And he very well should. But then there are many that revere these same leaders as if they were manna sent from heaven. Now this is why he stated in this discourse in verses 10 and 11, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. The thief has no regard for the flock or anyone else for that matter. So I remember a time back in New York City when people were getting killed for not giving someone a cigarette when they were asked. I mean, I'm going back into the 80s when crime was pretty rampant in New York. The point that I'm making here is that a criminal, whether a thief or a murderer, is going to destroy no matter what. And this is what Yeshua was warning us about. The pastor, the teacher, or even the rabbi that falls into this category. But Yeshua laid it out clear for us to see that the good shepherd can be identified by his selfless dedication to the care and concern that he has for the flock. John ten eleven says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. The good shepherd. We have to be careful who we let shepherd us because not everyone that wears a collar is trustworthy. Matthew seven twenty one. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my father in heaven. Our spiritual lives are on the line here. And Yeshua knew that. That's why throughout all of his teachings, he would interject a warning here and there. We just have to pay close attention to what he is saying. But what can be gathered is that very few, if any, will heed the warnings. You know, ever since the stay-at-home order has been put into place for this COVID-19 scare, you can see all over social media, that people will not recognize their sin. They go on filming themselves doing the stupidest things like drinking challenges and spraying aerosol and lighting it up on fire. But not a one is taking this time to reconnect with God. There are few, if any, looking to God for answers in the midst of all this chaos. And that is exactly what the enemy of our souls wants. He wants us to remain distracted. All of this will end and we'll get back to normal. And here's a warning. And if the word of God is true, which by the way, I believe it is. And then I say, welcome to the new normal. And I was talking with a friend. Yes, yes. Social distancing was practiced about how the very freedom that everyone took for granted may have very well come to an end. There's a book that touches on the topic of the new world order. 
And in one of the chapters, it speaks of the person of John Dewey, who was a socialist, communist, and also an atheist, and was quoted saying, there is no God and there is no soul. There are no needs for the props of traditional religion. You can find that on page 201 of this book. And it displays the 12 principles to the humanist manifesto. It's a layout of a humanist worldview. The humanists believe that man is nothing more than a highly evolved animal. And these are the people who plan to bring in the new world order. The reference to this book can be found in the transcript on our WordPress site. And it's the flatouttruth.wordpress.com. And the title of the book is called A New World Order. And this has been cooking for quite a while now. Don't be deluded. The term conspiracy theory was conjured up to discredit those who were trying to expose the truth of the corruption taking place in government. But people are clueless because they refuse to research the truth. They prefer to be spoon-fed whatever truth the elites feed them. You know, I was watching a video with Dr. Thomas Cowan. He was speaking of 5G and the coronavirus. And that video can be watched in the link in our show notes. And it's very interesting that even prior to watching this video, I was saying the very exact thing. All you have to do is look at the timeline of events. Yeah, October 31st, 2019, an article in Fortune reads, China is launching its 5G network ahead of schedule and on a spectrum the U.S. can't yet match by Grady McGregor. And that it's two months ahead of schedule in another article in The Independent on Tuesday, April 10th, 2018. It reads, China ranks citizens with the social credit system. Here's what you can do wrong and how you can be punished. And there was another article in Forbes dated January 21st, 2019. It says Chinese social credit score, utopian big data bliss or black mirror on steroids. Well, it's all a progressive push into the future of wireless. But at what cost? I mean, these leaders do not have the well-being of its citizens in mind. Simply put, they don't care. All they're after is a utopian landscape where the ideal earthly community will thrive without the burdensome plague of people that hinder their idea of a perfect society, with people posing as philanthropists while pushing the dark agenda of mandatory vaccination and chipping the masses to control their every move. In the words of George Green, we're expendable containers. It's just amazing how gullible people are and that they're, they readily accept whatever lie is being sold to them in exchange for their souls. Revelation chapter 13 speaks of this occurrence. Let's read Revelation chapter 13 verses 11 to 18. Then I saw another beast coming out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon and he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed he performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all 
both small and great, rich, poor, free, and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. This is what the current leaders of the world want to introduce as the solution to the pandemic. And what better time than the present to roll out the system of identification under the label of forced vaccinations and an implanted digital certificate, which will carry all of your medical records everywhere you go. And as was stated by philanthropist Bill Gates, the digital ID will allow you to travel domestically and internationally because they will know whether you recovered, you were vaccinated, and you were tested for COVID-19. That article, you can find the link in our notes. Yeshua laid all this out plainly to those who would willingly receive the truth that there is only one way to get to the Father, and that's through him and him alone. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me, John 14, 6. We can see the differences between a godly leader and a worldly leader. The godly leader should display certain traits, not only externally, but internally as well. And some of these traits, we can find them in Titus, the first chapter. Let's read Titus chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. An elder must be blameless, faithful to his wife, a man whose children believe and are not open to the charge of being wild and disobedient. Since an overseer manages God's household, he must be blameless, not overbearing, not quick-tempered, not given to drunkenness, not violent, not pursuing dishonest gain. Rather, he must be hospitable, one who loves what is good, who is self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. He must hold firmly to the trustworthy message as it has been taught so that he can encourage others by sound doctrine and refute those who oppress it, op oppose it. I'm sorry. And there's a reason for this. As a leader, he must lead by example because the flock watches his every move and adapts to the teachings given by him. And that is why I had said earlier that not everyone who wears a collar is pious or righteous with the best of intentions at heart. There are those who would have nothing more than to misdirect you on a highway to hell. And that is why it is utterly important, my friend, to seek out the truth for yourself. Don't take people's word for it. And that includes me. Don't just take my word for it. As Neo did in the Matrix, take and swallow that proverbial red pill and see just how far does this rabbit hole go that is yet labeled as the unknown but soon to be revealed. In choosing a spiritual leader for your spiritual journey, make sure that he lines up with the biblical description found in Titus chapter 1 verses 6 through 9. The times are too short and dangerous to allow yourself to be misled by a pompous, arrogant, self-willed individual claiming to be sent by the Most High God to whom all praises and honor and glory be. So the Good Shepherd, he lays his life down for his sheep. Others just scatter the sheep. The Good Shepherd leaves the 99 in search of that one lost sheep. The Good Shepherd is led by God 
and seeks to do his will. Yeshua was, is, and always will be the good shepherd. He gave his life for you. He forgave you. And he will restore you and lead you to greener grass. Remember, the time is being cut short, my friend. What we are witnessing in the world today is an acceleration of prophecy. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The gift of God is free for you to receive. Yeshua told us in Matthew chapter 25, verse 13, Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. We must remain alert. Judgment is coming for those who choose to rebel against Elohim with their idolatrous, adulterous, fornicating ways. And this is a time like no other that we have ever, ever experienced. So let us turn to the Good Shepherd. Let us follow his commands. We are about to enter the last chapter of human history, and the victor is none other than Yeshua HaMashiach. Let us not be weary in doing good, for in due time we will reap what we have sown if we do not give up. Galatians 6 verse 9. And whatever you do, remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Hebrews 13 7. So seek ye the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Are there any guarantees for following God? The answer is yes. He guarantees eternal life, but also the opposite for those who reject this free offer. We must trust and believe in him. Do not be fooled. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man reaps, that shall he also sow. Galatians 6, 7. My friend, the decision is yours. Remember, eternity and your soul is on the line here. Choose this day where you will reside forever. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I will say that this walk is not for everyone. Many have attempted and have failed because the attentions of their heart was not pure. John chapter 4 verses 23 and 24. But a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such as these to worship him. And God is spirit and his worshipers must worship him in spirit and in truth. My family, my friends. It has been an immense honor and a privilege to have spent this time together with you here on It's the Flat Out Truth Podcast. I'm your host, Bravo Cologne. It's a hard time that we're all going through right now, not knowing who to believe when it seems that the narratives being fed to us just don't line up. The one thing that you can definitely be sure of is that God is not man that he should lie. What he said will come to fruition as it is revealing itself before our very eyes. You just can't make this stuff up. So please, please, please be safe out there. Be aware of your surroundings and help those in need mainly the elderly, the widow, and the orphans. Show your human side. We can all make a difference in someone's life. Please subscribe, like, and comment. And you can email us at it's the flat out truth at gmail.com. Be true to thine own self. Bless others as God has blessed you. To those of you who continue to support us, our sincerest gratitude goes out to you. As I borrow the words of a very wise man, we never do it alone. Please help us spread this podcast. You can share it with someone that you feel might benefit from listening. And don't forget, 
Passover is coming. Hashem freed us from the house of bondage. So until next week, we bid you a Shavua Tov, a Hag Sameach Pesach, and a Hag Masach Sameach. As we get ready to count the Omer, Hashem bless you and keep you. Hashem make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Hashem lift his countenance on you and give you Shalom. Never forget, Ani lo yira. I will not fear. Trust in Hashem. He won't let you down. Shalom Aleichem, my friends. Shalom Aleichem, my family. It's Bravo Cologne.